Bill, what is the most persistent objection you hear to the fine-tuning argument? Well, among students who are not informed about these things, the most probable objection is that the universe is not fine-tuned for our existence. Mm -hmm. That in fact, um, physics does not exhibit the sort of fine-tuning that I've just described to you. That is patently false, however. The multiplicity and the variety of constants and quantities that have to be fine-tuned in this way is so great that the probability that any future physics will ever eliminate it entirely is highly, highly unlikely. So hmm. among scientists, among physicists who are informed, the most prominent objection is the multiverse. Hmm. Hmm. That if our universe is the only one it is, then the odds that it would be fine-tuned in the way that it is are just impossible to face. It, it, the chances are uh, practically infinitesimal. And therefore, what they do is they multiply their probabilistic resources by imagining that there is a multiverse, an array of worlds of which our universe is just a member, and moreover, all of these worlds are randomly ordered in their constants and quantities, so that by chance alone, if this ensemble of worlds is infinite, then finely tuned worlds will appear somewhere in the ensemble, and lo and behold, here we are, we happen to be in this one, but nothing to be surprised about, given the multi, uh, multiverse of randomly tuned worlds. So this is the major alternative to a designer today, uh, the multiverse hypothesis. And what would be your first comeback to this wild speculation for which there's no evidence? <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from what you just said, Roger Penrose uh, of Oxford University has offered a really powerful argument against using the multiverse to explain fine tuning. And it's basically this, that in order for observers to exist, you don't have to have a world that is fine tuned like our universe is. You could have a universe which is no larger than our solar system, um, where you have an island of order and a sea of chaos outside of that. And that sort of universe is vastly more probable than a finely mm -hmm. universe like ours. In fact, the most probable observable universe would be an even smaller universe, one that consists of a single brain that fluctuates into being out of the quantum vacuum with illusory perceptions of an external world. So if you appeal to the multiverse hypothesis, um, you have no way of knowing whether or not you are an ordinary observer like us, or whether or not, in fact, you are a Boltzmann brain, as they're called, with the illusory perception of a world that does not exist. I like what Paul Davey says about this. He's an agnostic astronomer. He says uh, the, the multiverse is a dodge <laughs> because the no one would be no one would be positing multiple universes if the evidence for design wasn't so strong. You know, uh, now that, that's a further objection: is that it's ad hoc in mm -hmm. that postulated simply to explain away the fine tuning, but there's no independent evidence to believe that such mm. a Exists. Whereas in the case of theism, we have many independent arguments like the Kalam cosmological mm -hmm. argument and others that there is such a transcendent creator of the universe so that it isn't ad hoc in the way that the multiverse uh, hypothesis is. Mm -hmm.